Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is the ASUS M5A99FX Pro R2.0 motherboard. And this is part of the uh, R2.0 motherboards that were recently uh, reissued by ASUS. Of course, this comes with uh, the new CAF format improvements utilizing, um, if you're not familiar with the old format, they use the ROM format for the BIOS, but the new CAF format for the BIOS it basically improves the post and uh, boot speeds under not just Windows 8 but Windows 7 as well and also provides enhanced security so that the UEFI doesn't get infected uh, with any malicious uh, software, any viruses and stuff like that so it will uh, just overall stability also whenever uh, interoperability within Windows 8 uh, for full compatibility and of course it, they can't just have that sticker if it's not certified it is WHQL certified and uh, inside here you can see of course, the uh, M5A99FX motherboard itself. And underneath that, let's put that aside for a bit. It is a compartment for the accessories. You can find a pair of SATA cables. It's 90 degree on one side. So, pair and another pair that makes them four cables. You have your SLI bridge. I tell you it's SLI because it's shorter. The Crossfire uh, bridge has a, a wider connector, a lot more connectors. And you also get the IO shield. That's unique. I've, first time I've seen a white uh, IO shield from ASUS, and it's all color coded, but it looks a lot better than the black one, I must say. And uh, there's also labeled as well. And also the Q connectors, which makes it convenient. You have one Q connector for USB and a Q connector for the front panel connectors in here, which are labeled already. Makes installing the it, inside a case convenient. Also, you have the user's guide here which is a thick comprehensive all English user's guide and it comes with an insert uh, paper here for setting up a HCI driver in Windows XP for users who still use that operating system and lastly we have the ASUS M5A99FX Pro R2.0 driver here it also comes with the AI suite software and uh, I believe it also comes with uh, the of course the drivers all, all the necessary drivers also comes with a uh, case badge here, good sticker, put it in your case, show your uh, ASUS, you're proud of your ASUS hardware. So let's put this aside and uh, let's take a closer look on our ASUS M5A99FX Pro R2.0 motherboard. And here we have the ASUS M5A99FX Pro R2.0 motherboard completely out of packaging and we can clearly see it uses a standard ETX form factor. It is 9.6 by 12 inches in size and let's take a look at the features one by one and let's take a look at the upper left hand corner here. First you can see the 8 pin CPU power and right below that of course you have your uh, Digi Plus VRM design it uses 6 plus 2 uh, phases there and it has it's cooled that area with a heat pipe connecting the north bridge and the uh, that air right there and as you can see 6 plus 2 for the CPU and two more phases for the DRAM for overclocking who would deliver uh, precise power control and they're all digital and uh, also of course the AM3 plus socket which is backwards compatible with AM3 and Phenom in case you uh, haven't upgraded to the latest FX processors yet you can use the Phenom AM3 processors you also see the Digi Plus uh, EPU chips at there. From, uh, Asus also have a pair of uh, fan headers. These are 4-pin PWM fan headers. One is for the CPU fan, which is standard, and the CPU optional fan. Uh, since most uh, tower heat sinks have more than one fan, that is nice that Asus has included that. It's pretty much standard in all Asus motherboards uh, to have two CPU fans, so that's a cool feature to have. And aside from that, for the DRAM, you have this uh, unique ASUS feature which has the lock on the top part but not on the bottom so that it doesn't interfere with your CPU your, uh, video card or your GPU when you have a GPU installed there it doesn't it have to be uninstalled in order to switch out a memory uh, slot you can see here these are alternating dual channel uh, memory supporting up to 2400 megahertz of course overclocked in the BIOS and uh, see here you have the Memo K button, which is another unique feature found only in ASUS motherboards, and uh, this is really useful 
whenever uh, you have your CPU already overclocked and you have some settings you need to change for the memory, just press that and it will reset uh, to whatever was the safe. Uh, it will boot the, your your RAM to whatever was the safe setting. And uh, the thing about that is that you don't need to reset the entire CMOS whenever you're, you're uh, tweaking your memory. So you can just press that without touching your overclocking the CPU at all. So that is a very cool feature that is unique again on ASUS. Also have the 24 pin power you have the USB 3.0 front panel header and of course since the uh, 990FX chip and or the Southbridge SB950 from AMD has native USB 3 yet this is powered by the Asmedia 1042 chip you can see there and also uh, Asmedia chip provides not the same chip but another Asmedia 1061 chip provides the pair of extra SATA three 6G ports that you see here, the blue ones. The white ones, you can see one, two, three, four, and five, of course, are from the SB950 chip underneath this heatsink right here. And let's move on. Find here at the bottom, you have a, an, uh, this is a power uh, LED, which pretty much lights up when there is power coming in uh, from your power supply. You have your front panel headers, and uh, this is where the Q connectors go. And this is another unique button. And actually, this is the first time I've seen this in an ASUS motherboard. You have the direct key button. Uh, you're familiar with overclocking. You usually have to enter the BIOS and you have to keep on spamming that delete or F2 key. And this allows you to enter that uh, BIOS mode directly without having to worry about timing that. So, and I uh, forgot to mention there is a CPU fan header here. It's a four pin fan header in the front one of it. And, uh, where we were and here is actually a it says TV header uh, this was I think believe this was for the Thunderbolt uh, EX expansion um, for the for, for Asus but uh, I'm not sure if they're going with that I haven't seen the new egg surf, surface in new egg yet but I've seen it in uh, certain previews of it and from other websites so that should be interesting uh, from what I know it was it is a card that ru uh, runs on the PCIe X4 uh, kind of slots so you can plug those in and you can plug in here to have a Thunderbolt expansion but uh, we'll see later if uh, if that is in fact available now and you also get of course your firewire header and one two three USB 2.0 headers are of course colored blue and a trusted platform module header and this is another ASUS exclusive feature it is a bias flashback button and a flashback button LED right there you see to press that uh, of course whenever you are going to update your bios and also for the audio you have your front panel audio header right here and directly above that is the SPDIF out and uh, for the audio you have then a Realtek ALC 892 right there and two more fan headers right here in the rear and this is surprising that they, they put two there instead of having one here at the bottom. Of course, uh, that's actually a smart move since uh, in, uh, ha having an extra connector here, usually it's uh, there's really no fan at the bottom, mostly are at the top or in the rear of the case. So most people uh, don't have a, a fan cable long enough to reach the bottom. So uh, it's good that they have included that. Also, they have a removable bias chip down there. And we'll take a look at the PCIe slots here and the expansion slots. You have a pair of PCIe X16 slots. They are physically X16, the blue ones. You have a pair of black ones, which are physically 8X. And you have a PCIe that is a single lane, X1. And you also have a legacy PCI slot right in the middle. Of course, this one allows you to uh, do, run dual SLI. In the blue ones, you can run triple SLI, one, two, and then the third one here will only run, of course, in 8x, and uh, it can't run on. Uh, it's not the. It's not since it is a mainstream motherboard that is understandable. It doesn't. It's not meant to run a triple SLI or quad SLI as as well as the high end uh, ROG motherboards. And uh, let's take a look at the features here at the back. Same thing. We have, of course, the audio outputs. You have your USB 2.0 ports, 2, 4, 6, 8, which are from, of course, the um, AMD Southbridge, more enough there. And you have your, this is where the other SATA 3 6G port was from the SB950. 
as we see here there's where there was only five on the on, on the midboard is the it is an eSATA port here in the rear and uh, of course you have your rear USB 3.0 ports as well which are from the Asmedia 1042 another Asmedia 1042 chip there and the gigabit ethernet from a Realtek uh, chip there I think it's 8111F and your audio uh, optical output and for legacy users you have they didn't just use a hybrid uh, PS2 for keyboard and PS2 mouse they actually have separate ones here for the keyboard and mouse so that should make legacy users very very happy and uh, what you do now of course is uh, let me just flip it here in the back and see what it looks like just a quick overview and uh, put this into our system and test it with our FX8350 pile driver processor and see how well the ASUS M5A99FX Pro R2.0 uh, motherboard performs especially with the new updated uh, cap format BIOSes and uh, Windows 8 of course and compare Windows 8 with Windows 7 performance alright thanks for watching and see you next time